has begun. This is the Valor Series in North America. Immortals is up 1-0 over Ferris. Yeah, I do want to talk about Scud. Scud I really like. He actually was played in Southeast Asia when he came out because he's really good side laner, actually, because his, uh, his passive anabolic rage actually gives him a lot of damage, 20% additional damage, which makes him pretty decent in the early game. He also restores 80 HP and mana as well so each normal attack he does reduces the cooldown of his anabolic rage by one second and it procs every 10 seconds so scud is actually pretty strong in the early game you want to invade with scud but immortals is going to decide not to invade with scud neo is going to play around with the team and the knock up from lubu here x is coming in there getting on death's touch this could be a kill potentially but i think he's, he'll be saved by his tower Tower is going to save him, but that doesn't allow, or that doesn't mean that Neo and X-Tiers are going, aren't going to have the opportunity to proxy the wave. Now three members are on the bottom side of the map, Shamu and PYG. You're going to find yourself in a rough spot. I don't know what Neo was thinking on there. Sure, you can proxy the wave, but you knew there was going to be a rotation. Joker's not able to come around. Dave is not in a position to roam by any means of the game as he is sitting at level two. Bought himself some upgraded boots, added mobility, trying to dodge out some of those skill shots, and so now... Bobo and Numbers are going to find themselves in the bottom. KZ Fox as well. Chamu's going to be there. This is going to be a great little counter gank opportunity. Ooh, KZ Fox is going to be a rough stop, wow. but Bobo goes down before they even get an opportunity. KZ Fox is going to have a little bit of a hate he's in here. Four. He's he's ultimate backstab. Oh, there we go. There's, there's the kill. ultimate that we were looking again. for. He's got himself the reset. Is it going to be wow. enough? It is double kill coming out for KZ Fox. Yeah, that's the power butterfly right there. And Dave is playing Joker. And look at the burst damage. Wow, he gets the kill right underneath tower. This is amazing to watch. And I wonder who is their mage? They have no mage on the team. Looks like it's all going to be weapon power damage and, and, uh, or, or a physical damage, which is going to be very interesting because they can get hard countered by defense here. You do, and you have three tanks with Teemy as well as Xenial and Ma uh, Malik on the side, so they can just spell uh, straight armor, not have anything to worry about, so prioritization becomes a breeze for Ferrix. It's just find the defensive items that have armor and then go, mm, okay, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this. But in the meanwhile, the question becomes, are they going to have time? Because if the Abyssal Dragon goes into the hands of Immortals, Dave is level four, so he's going to have that ultimate there. And look at the damage. That's going to be a 50 or 100 to 50 immediate for KZ Fox yeah. before he has even completed a set of items. Yeah, KZ Fox is going to win just because of his skin there. I love the butterfly hover burn. Look at that touch there. He's getting so low. He needs to back off. He barely survives. Sliver of health. Wraither is able to get that uh, blue golem, and that's going to be a decent trade there for Ferox there. Barely surviving that fight. And so now Immortals getting the counter jungling done in their favor. Bobo doing a good job at bullying numbers in the bottom lane. So a solid effort by him. We haven't seen the Scud provided much of really any sort of presence here in the Valor Series, but Immortals confident after that game one victory have decided to bring it out here in game number two. Mike Gollum has spawned for Ferrix's blue side, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be the ones to do it. And look at that, Dave, sitting at level five, already dropping this Kali down extremely low. Neo in the meanwhile, on a little bit more of a conventional support, um, Arduin uh, Anduin not being the one that we've seen too much, but it wow, looks like numbers. Look at this. Oh, you've got the iframes coming out of Malik. He's going to try to get just enough of a shield. It will be enough for Boba, but here comes Dave the snipe. Oh, oh it's not going to be enough, but he, he does have it. the ultimate. It's just going to be a simple boop, boop, auto attack. That's going to be the canister, and it is will be the Joker to pick up the kill. Yeah, you got to watch Scud here on um, Boba and Scud. He does something called Fear Shard. He charges in with a punch, and then he basically knocks you up, and then he can use his ultimate which is called Wild Beast 4. He kind of spins around, and anyone he hits, he knocks away from his spin. So he can go behind the back line and knock the enemy towards the ally. But look at the stuns and the combo coming from Dave here. Chamu barely survives, but then the thing about Scud that makes it so good is he's such a high damage burst type of hero. He goes in, goes out, and when he uses Wild Burst Fury, it resets his Fury charge to then be able to use again to escape or, or continue to engage. Meanwhile, PYG is going to go down. Oh, he's been left alive just a little bit by Death's Touch, but Death will find him in the meanwhile. Ultimate goes Dave, as now you're seeing Immortals continue to steamroll from what they had in the last game. KZ Fox is going to get a nice little blink over the wall to help himself out, and so now... Ferrix find themselves in an even rougher spot than they found in game number one. 
Bobo is going to try to get a little bit of damage. You've got the AoE coming out of numbers just to try to make sure that he can defend himself on this wave because when the towers start to go down, that is when Immortals is going to continue to push into victory. Yeah, and KZ Fox is building a more tanky butterfly there. Getting, instead of, you know, Soul Reaver damage jungle item, he's going to get the Leviathan, which gives him more health every time he stacks and kills more monsters. So that's a really good butterfly build. And if he gets to the late game, he's going to be very, very dangerous. He's going to be able to solo kill the entire team if he plays her perk and abilities correctly. So now Bobo finds himself barely left alive. You see Death Touch again going down. Bobo's gonna have to be forced to walk away. Neo in the meanwhile is going on in the back line. Ultimate is gonna come out. No, I stand corrected. That's gonna actually gonna be Death Timers. They're gonna be done in the meanwhile. Teamy will try to keep him alive, but Chamu will still end up falling in the mean. And this is where things start to get scary. PYG is able to be able to pick up that kill. Neo is have to be forced to walk away. You've got Dave coming in on the bis, but uh-oh, here comes KC Fox. He's got three oh, juicy, juicy options as a potential for him. You've got the ultimate coming down. Onslaught goes KC Fox. That's gonna be a reset. That's Jeez. gonna be a reset. That's gonna be a reset. Oh, Triple kill God. for the butterfly. That was insane amount of damage Butterfly is doing. And that's the risk. If you don't kill Butterfly, she comes in like that, and everyone is low. She's just going to use her ability. She's going to whirlwind. She's going to sword propel. She's going to cast backstab, get a kill, recast backstab, recast whirlwind, recast sword propel. And so much damage just coming out from her. And that ability damage is going to do so much work because none of them are building any type of ability uh, defense except for Gilded Greaves because most of the team is attack damage right now. So it's very interesting uh, composition here coming from Moas, but it's working out for them so far. So EJ, seven, zero, and three. KZ Fox is sitting comfortably on this butterfly. Something that you have to worry about. X tier is going to be able to pick up the kill. He's going to pop ultimate, try to get a little bit of life steal. Look at that. That's three times at less than 10 HP. Numbers is going to be alive, but IMT X tiers will be alive in the same. Neo and Numbers are going to go right off the mark, trying to get themselves in a little bit of a better position. There's the knock up there from Neo. The ultimate, as well as the heal, is going to come out Ooh. of Death Touch. Neo will fall. But at what cost are they losing? Because you have three members on the bottom side pushing down the turrets. Yeah, that was an okay trade. Neo being a little over aggressive there, giving the kill over there, but it's worth it for a tower. And let's see what they're gonna do here. And look at the damage from KZ Fox. Just going in there and just cleaning house. Oh my goodness, this is disastrous. Butterfly going absolutely ham. Again and again and again. KZ Fox secures himself a second triple kill off of the Butterfly reset. 13, zero, and three. Double Peace. digits at seven and a half minutes. A high ground tower to boot. And not only that, but with four members in the mid lane, another high ground tower is going to be taken. The minions are coming in. You've got the respawns, but it looks like they might just like to end. KZ Fox will find himself very, very low. He will end up falling. No perfect stat line for you, sir. The members of Immortals are going to have to probably try to go back on this because all five members of Ferex are alive. Wow. The Onslaught continues. Neo's going to have to try to help them. Dave, as well as x are trying to kite themselves back. x actually picks up the kill on the Shamu. Neo is still alive, as well as Dave. However, Numbers will pick up the kill on the x -tiers. Neo will fall, and so that is going to be death timers aplenty. But the core is down to 25% HP. Yeah, oh my goodness. Look at Bobo. He's still hanging around. This is so risky. I don't know why he's doing that. He could be killed by Pig's Play, but he's level 12. And Look at the plays he's making there. He's going to get the kill. Does he have the ultimate? No, he does not. He walks into Kali's Eternal Blame, takes the damage and the slow, and giving the kill over to the side of Ferex here. So just like that, Ferex find themselves in a much rougher position than they hoped to be in coming into this game number two. They had the composition. They had the draft. But at the end of the day, a good offense will always beat a good defense as Butterfly has led the charge. KZ Fox 13, 1, and 3. Yeah, I just noticed uh, Immortals is heavy on attack damage. But Ferex is heavy on ability damage. It's Zill. It's Kali. And where is their attack damage hero? They don't have one. And that's very interesting to see the matchup. But as a result here... Immortals is just two ahead in items, two ahead in damage, 23 kills to nine. This is really tough for the side of Ferris to come back in here. 
So X Tears, as well as the rest of Immortals, are gonna try to get themselves one last final sweep if they have the opportunity to do so against Farrakh. PYG, as well as Chamu and Raether, are gonna end up falling down. Death Touch is gonna be the next to go to his name set. Numbers is gonna find himself low. Look at the damage! It doesn't matter if you're a tank because the absolute onslaught oh my God. of KZ Fox and the rest of Immortals. The wave is coming down on the bottom side of the web. Chamu is up in five seconds, but I do not think it matters. Immortals have come out with two unconventional drafts. Confidence has been in plenty, but more importantly, execution has stayed the same. Ace is gonna come out. Dave will pick up the final kill, but all in all, Immortals with the victory.